Sam Johnson is a talented artist and songwriter residing in the Bay Area. He's originally from SoCal. He's been out in the Bay since 2005, and he has been making quite a name for himself. He's released a bunch of really cool music. Uh, his newest single is Flower Petals. He's got other cool songs like Fuego. He's got a nice, cool Cali vibe sound. It's, it's really hard to describe, but you know what? It makes me feel good when I listen to it. What's up, Sam? How you doing, man? That was a killer intro right there. Nailed yeah. it. Yeah, that was, that, that was the one. I'm good, man. Good to be talking with you again. What's your earliest memory of uh, music impacting you? Michael Jackson. Yeah? Off the, really? Yep. No, uh, Bad. Oh, the Bad. Bad okay. album. Yeah, so that was, I remember that being like, like, I I wanted all the VHS tapes. I had mm-hmm. a little leather jacket, whatever. Oh, I was nice. you know, four years old, spinning around, trying to do the moonwalk. And I, I think there's probably a lot of kids that's, that got into music that way. Yeah, same here, man. I, I was just one album prior. It was uh, the three oh. for me. But, Got you, but that was that was that's your earliest musical memory as well. Uh, I don't know. If, no, my earliest musical memory. I think some of them are like that song uh, "Take on Me." Yeah, oh, sure. To that on a little boombox and just like yeah. being fascinated. Who does that song? Aha uh-huh or something. Uh-huh. Oh man, it's really he, he hits like seven octaves on that one. Yeah, no thanks. When uh, how did you start playing music? Did you start with guitar. Well, or? Yeah, I started with guitar. Um, kind of a sad story, but I'll tell it to you. My mom died when I was twelve, and mm. uh, and I moved in with my my dad, who I didn't live with previously. So I was homeschooled for a period of time when I was about twelve years old. So seventh mm. grade, seventh grade year, homeschooled by my my dad and my stepmom, and I hated it because I was used to public school. All my friends were there, and now I'm in a new city, and I'm homeschooled, and I, I hated it. So I tried to run. I tried to run away. Mm. and it didn't work out uh you know i they found me very quickly and uh i was then basically on house arrest because they Mm. they didn't want to homeschool me because i wasn't complying they didn't have a school to send me to because we were in a new neighborhood and like this didn't have it figured out yet so for three months of my seventh grade year i didn't go to school at all and and i wasn't allowed out of the house because i might run away Mm. and so i basically had I had three books. I had the, the first two Harry Potters that were out and like something else. I had a bunch of CDs, maybe like 10 CDs. I had some Bob Marley. I had some Tupac. I had, I know the band Creed was in there. I know okay. Dave Matthews was in there. Sublime was in there. Um, and, I, and then some other random ones, but so I had these albums to listen to over and over again. And then I had this hand me down guitar. Mm-hmm. And uh, so, you know, my entire day would be reading, listening to music and playing guitar. And that's how I got into it. Wow, that's incredible. It, it sounds like music was uh, kind of a healing experience for you, giving you like an outlet to channel that angst. Yeah, man, sometimes I forget, you know, now that I've been doing it for so long, you know, I was 12 then, I'm 34 now. Mm-hmm. But at the time, it was just everything around me was changing. My whole life was changing. I moved so many times when I was younger, uh, new, new schools, this and that. So the only thing that kind of stayed constant was I always had music to go back to. And then in like high school, I started a band and I started getting like, a, you know, I started getting positive feedback from, you know, the people around me and my friends and stuff like that. And so then it turned into a new thing where I was, you know, it's not just something I do in my room anymore. It's something that I'm getting like positive reactions from and it's opening right, up right. some doors and it's fun and I can get a girlfriend now. And like it's so, yep. so that just really kept me on that path. Cause it was like the first positive thing I had done that, um, I don't know, stuck around. It sounds like it kind of gave you a thing, an identity, uh, an anchor point. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely like heavily rooted in my identity. When I was in high school, you know, being in a band was the most important thing to me. And uh, when I did think you start uh, writing songs? Pretty early like 13 or 14. I think my first song was about 13 or 14. And I wrote some stupid song about there was this, this guy that had a bagel shop across the school from our high school and everybody used to go there to get bagels, but he hated all the kids that would come in. Right. So I wrote wrote this crazy song about him. Mm. uh, That was my first, you know, I was trying to make my friends giggle. And did they? 
yeah, dude, everybody, everybody liked it. People were like, oh, can we have a cassette tape of this and stuff? And, you know, when you're younger, especially in high school, I think it's just like so easy to get something kind of popping, mm. you know, because yeah. I mean, we, we weren't good. I wasn't good back then. I just would do it. And so that already gives right. you credit just for doing it. Yeah, it takes courage. And it, it sounds like you were the cool guy. I mean, you still are a cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> cool guy playing. Is a garage band? You guys have a garage? Take, yeah, take, man. Take, take, paint a picture for me of uh, it was this beautiful, garage. Mate. It was beautiful, man. This is like some of the best times of my life. So we, had, so we were this little reggae band called Invisibly Miked. Nice. I actually have the one and only piece of merchandise from our old what? band. Yeah. So my buddy, Jordy, you can barely read. It's kind of funky. It says invisibly miked. Mm. So my buddy, That's Jordy, nice. who is also in the band was a talented artist and he drew that up and I was like, Oh, I'm going to put it on a shirt. So I went and had it screen printed. Then the next day I wore it to school. And at, the, at this time, my, my little band was kind of like in our school, at least was known. So, uh, and this is in Huntington beach, California. So it's like a pretty big school and people were like, Oh, yo, let me get a shirt. I want to get a shirt. I want to get a shirt. But because I'm stupid, I was like, Nope, this is a one-off t-shirt. If so I didn't print any more <laughs> or so, I'm so stupid. Right. And that's still the only one. That's the only one. That's the only one we ever did. That's, that's crazy, man. I know. Right. I wish I had like, you know, an uncle back then or something to be like, dude, you should be slanging these things. Were you guys playing backyard parties and all of it? Yeah. Whatever. All of it. You know, little, little, little competitions, you know, school, battle, of the bands. battle of the bands. Yeah, exactly. School functions that, you know, they let us play at lunch sometimes or, you know, just where, wherever we could. And we had, we had this VW bus. What's, um, uh, do you remember any of the song? Oh, you okay, You had the bagel song. Um, oh yeah. I mean, I remember a ton of, of our songs from high school. Um, but I remember a song you and I did. I was just thinking about it like two minutes ago before we jumped on this call. Um, I, I, yeah, I know we did a song, but I, I actually oh, forgot I did it. not mean to let you down. It was harder than you probably know. When I admitted I'm quitting, and my heart just wasn't in it, but I forgot to mention for it. Like, yeah. Oh, you may never know what made me. I remember me that part. Fall. Oh, I hope you I don't. I sure do remember that part. Cause the truth's too much for you. Hope this song won't make radio. I didn't tell you cause it's too oh, much wow, for me. Dog. You remember the whole thing. Was that 2000? You said you moved out in 2005. Was that 2005 ish? That would have been, I think, because I remember writing. I feel that. like I, I was one of the first guys who, uh, like, like you, I think I just remember you just moved out. You had a beanie on and, um, <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I swear. You, you had a, a total uh, SoCal vibe going on. It's like you just got off the bus from from. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm a little less broy than I was when I lived in Southern California. A little less broy, so. <laughs> but it, the, you know, you could take the bro out of Broville, but you can't. Whatever the, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, it's I got still, you. It's got still you. in there a little bit. Yeah, uh, so hey, that, that gotta... had to be ten years ago, Nate, at least, like maybe 11, 12 years wow. ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we met on Craigslist. I came out to your, to your spot. You had a studio set Cupertino, up. Cupertino. Yeah. Yep. It, it all started it. in uh C Cupertino, like, uh, like, uh, what's his name? <laughs> Let's try to compare ourselves to Apple computers. Oh, yeah, good, but uh, good luck. It, yeah. <laughs> that analogy didn't work. Uh, <laughs> what's uh, what's your most important skill you think to develop as a songwriter for those aspiring writers out there? the most important skill to develop as a songwriter. Well, I don't know because it changes as you get older. Like when you're younger, you want to make music and you want to, you know, so it's just something fun you do, mm -hmm. you know, it's cool. And I think as you get, if you're trying to be more professional about it, you have to like set aside time to do it. Yeah. So if that's an hour a day, a few mm. times a week or five days a week, if, I mean, if you want to be pro, like people at the pro level are writing constantly. So I think that setting aside a certain amount of time every day or nearly every day yeah. to write is important. That's, that's what I would say. 
what's your, uh, your, your process? Do you, use, do you write every day or when you, just when you feel it or how do you go about that? I feel like I go in, uh, in phases. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's been different points in my life where I'm really writing a lot. So that'll be every day, you know, maybe a little at night, maybe a little bit in the morning. Okay. Um, and then whatever, then something happens, you're more focused on your release stuff, uh, mm. promotion, gigging, et cetera. Right. Um, so it would kind of go in phases this past year though, because it's been shut down here and probably right, right. Ev- everywhere, obviously. Yeah. Um, I've been writing very consistently. So I think I counted it at the end of 2020 and I had completed 30 songs oh, in wow. 2020. So that's, and that's not like, that's not, um, ideas or like partials that's like right. top to bottom top to bottom written wow. six six of those 30 got professionally produced mixed mastered artwork mm. and are coming and will come out this year so you know a fifth of everything that i finished yeah. in 2020 gets released and you know that's doesn't say anything about the songs that got tossed out early or never right. finished or forgotten about or whatever so how did you go about uh, whittling it down to those six? Do you, do you plan for other people or do you, is it something you just feel? And um, I do play them for other people, but these six actually were just like, Oh, I want to do these. Like I mm. just had the, the energy and, and enthusiasm to make sure I booked proper studio time and had like an engineer right. producer or whatever I needed. Um, it's just, you know, writing the inspiration and excitement. I got you. Okay. So it's, it's the song, these songs pulled you and motivated you to want to take it to that, that next stage of commitment. Exactly. But now I'm just stacking demos and then we're going to go back through the demos and be like, okay, these are the ones we want to make sure get done proper. Uh, okay. I'm starting to see the process there. Cause I'm new to recording. So I've been using logic since November. Oh, okay. So you're doing some self uh, recording at home, self producing of the demos at home. Yes. Now I gotcha. am. But so b- before I would always work with a producer uh, yeah. and then we just get together. And yeah. so as of, as of late, I'm, and I'm actually doing pretty good. Like I'm taking classes and, nice. and work, working on it daily. So it, it's good for me. It's very basic levels of production, you know, not, not nothing fancy. Do you, do you want to get really good with the producing or do you, are you cool with just like, uh, I just want to cut the demos with it and then have someone else. I think I want to get to the point where I can at least track my guitars and vocals well enough that mm. everything else, you know, a better producer could finesse. Right. Gotcha. Maybe you're the guy, Nate. Hey, I'm down. Maybe you're the guy. I'm down. Yeah, dude, I'm Absolutely. Um, still, still making music. Yeah. Yeah. Still making music. You know, I, I, uh, I got some ideas and visions for sounds, but, you know, I, I think something I learned is uh, I got to listen more. I, I sometimes I've had visions I want to do, but I got to, you're the artist. Where do you want to go? That's a pretty mature perspective, man. Yeah, I've been feeling the same way. It, listening is, a, especially with the podcasting thing. It's, right, right. You know. Yeah, active listening, man, you know. Yep, yep. What Actually, kind of music? I'm sorry. Go ahead. A, we actually started a podcast myself uh, in January. So it's, it's, you know, mostly music based. We have okay. guests on friends on and a, a couple of buddies host it, but what's the name of the cast? It's called that's fresh. That's and fresh. We, haven't, we haven't put out any episodes yet. So we're like, we're stacking up a season of episodes and then we're going to release it. Okay. So, nice yeah. man. How, how many yeah. episodes go into a season? We have not decided. I think we're, we've shot five. We have two more coming up. So maybe it'll be about seven. And what's the the theme you guys are talking about? Well, basically anything we find fresh, but because okay. we're all musicians. So it's my buddy, Chris Loxamana is a, as a co-host and he's the, he's the producer for the Adam Carolla show. Oh, nice. You heard, do you know Adam Carolla? Oh uh, yeah. I think I heard of him somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah he, he was used with Dr. Drew back yeah. in the day. Right. Yeah. 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 So, so Chris has been producing that for a long time and wow. uh, he's also a great musician. So we just teamed up and t- 
try, we're trying to have a good time and, and uh, connect people and meet new people and tell some stories. That's about it. That's the plan. That's awesome, man. On, on the music front, um, you know, is there, do you ever say to yourself, I wish I could hear more of this kind of music out there? Is there either it fell out of style or it just hasn't been developed yet? You know, lately I've been kind of liking um, a, a lot. Of, I've been watching a lot of surf videos lately. Oh, okay. so nice, nice. When, I, when, I'm, when I'm down in the basement, you know, that's where I make music right now. Uh, okay. I put on, the, I'll put the YouTube on and watch yep. surf videos. And sometimes I'll mm. check out the, the music and see what's going on. It's a lot of instrumentals, a lot of guitar music and organic sounds, real instruments. And, uh, gotcha. and I like it, you know, production these days is so advanced, yeah. so advanced. It's just, you know, next level future music by now. I mean, the guys that are producing at the really top levels of pop, it's just, it's it's insane the, the amount they can do. It's really impressive. Yeah. But to go back to just, you know, here's four instruments in a room. Let's right, see what we right. can do. You know, I kind of like that idea. So I think everything I'm writing now is pretty simple. Ah, uh, okay. You're, you're stripping down the instrumentation a bit. Mostly because I don't have the capabilities of producing something insane. So like, mm -hmm. I can't, I can't compete at that level. So gotcha. that's what feels comfortable to me. Do you want to have, um, for, th for this sound, the drums are kind of tricky to, to make something sound modern and use the regular acoustic drums. Uh, mm -hmm. do you want to use acoustic drums or do you picture it more like a, a hybrid or just all electronic drums? Um, well, right now all I'm doing is using logic plugins. So okay. I'll just drag and drop a drummer in there and mm. loop it out. Uh, I, I don't, I don't program drums at all. Um, not that I, I, I have a basic understanding of drums. I can play the kit a little bit, yeah. but production is different. And so I feel like, you know, if I pass that off to a good producer, they can find better sounds for the drums or make changes if they want to. But I would love to have all of the options, you know, Yeah. have a, have a real drummer and use like a sub in there or something. Right. Right. It's gotta, it's gotta have that Bay area slap to it. Right. We all like a little bass, right? <laughs> Absolutely. And it, when it comes to the cowbell, are you a, a more or a less type of guy? Man, I like it, actually. Um, you know what always kind of bugs me is when you are listening to your demo or whatever song you're writing and you've got the click track on. Yeah. And then yeah. You, take the, you take the click out and you're like, damn, we just lost some momentum. Right. You know, the, sometimes the click adds a lot. So cowbell, that might be the best substitute. Okay. Cowbell is, this is a cowbell highlight. I, I could tell. I, <laughs> so, uh, so on our podcast, we'd go fresh, not fresh cowbell. I'm going to say cowbell is fresh. Absolutely. It's timeless, man. <laughs> <laughs> you love those SNL skits. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Will, uh, Will Smith, he's one of my favorite actors. <laughs> Will Smith. <laughs> I mean, Will Ferrell, right? Um, so, <laughs> yeah. I, you I know what was, was I thought that was a joke. Hey, you know what? When Lance Armstrong landed on the moon, it was it was a boom. Nice you got thing. it, baby. You're nailing, <laughs> you're nailing them right now. Um, you know what's crazy is you know I, I saw you when you first came into the Bay Area, and then we we disconnected. I don't remember why or what happened, but then I saw you performing it. Um, developing your skills at the uh, fisherman's wharf like maybe yeah. five or ten years later i was like is that sam yeah dude and Crazy. you had a, a whole crowd around you and you were you were you're rocking uh rocking Doing it man thing. man but, i just got a le letter from those guys today saying they're they're hoping to open up fisherman's wharf again soon so mm. you might find me back out there man i don't really know you know all my gigs currently are gone in california yeah Sorry I'm gonna. Start, I'm starting to leave the state pretty soon. In April, I'll, I'll start going other places. But, um, yeah. So to have street performing back would be very cool. And that's how. If you're listening to this, I started as a street performer out after high school. I started street performing in San Francisco, and um, yeah, sell, slinging CDs and getting some mm -hmm. practice in and meeting folks and. You're getting your ten thousand hours right. I did some math recently. I think I've probably done about 6,000 hours of performing. Wow. 
That's incredible. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think's a, a crucial skill that you learned from street performance? Um, a lot, a lot. I learned a lot about myself. Um, I think just the interaction with people that you end up having, you know, that I've met so many cool people from street performing over. I did it for years for years. I did it five days a week. So I was really out there all the time. Um, and I met so many people and made so many friends that I'm still connected to this day. And that was, you know, a decade ago. Uh, so that's that plus, you know, if you're going to be performing, you need to get your reps in, like you have to get your reps for sure. So that was the best way I could figure out how to do it. So I got the practice I needed badly. Um, I met a ton of people and I just like, I don't know, built some self-confidence and I can do this. Were you nervous the first time you had to get out there? Oh, dude, it's, I was, I was talking to my uncle about it today and because I'm considering possibly doing it again in the future, but I don't know to go out there and just rogue, set up your stuff, set up an amplifier by yourself. That's you know, very no, courageous. No homies or anything to like prop you up. It's just setting up. Right. And then all these people looking at you like, are you going to be good? Are you going to be bad? Nobody asked for music. It's just, you showed up and now you're right. encroaching on everybody's space. So Here it's I am. terrifying. Um, I, yeah, dude, I just remember lots of, sweaty shirts and it, it wasn't because i was working hard it's just from anxiety dude wow just anxiety wow. just like because and also you can hear people chattering to like oh, yeah. he's, not that, he's not that good or whatever maybe i'm off my game um you know people are just walking right by you maybe somebody laughs at you i've you know had people ask me if i was homeless quite a few oh times gosh. so it's just like there's so much negative stuff that goes along with it but the positive stuff was humongous mm. like i remember after after doing it for a couple of years on this one day out of nowhere so I, okay i started i used to make like 100 200 bucks a day when i'd go out there i was but, curious about that but i didn't want to ask no you could ask me man that, um, that's that's a, that's a good day for a musician right there right so I was, I did that and it was like that for like the first year or two. And then right. out of, out of nowhere in one day, I made 400 bucks in an hour, one hour. What? I sold, I sold all my CDs. It was just like a completely outlier type day. And I was shocked. I didn't bring enough CDs to sell that day. I usually mm -hmm. played for three hours. I could only play for one cause I'm sold out. And I was like, Holy shit. The next day I'm going to come with so many CDs. So I just went home, printed all my own CDs, you know, put the labels on them um, and came out with like a hundred CDs the next day. And the next day I sold like 70 CDs and made like $700, $800. And I couldn't believe it because it was a, that was the most money I'd ever made in a day in my life yeah. doing, any, doing anything. And now I've done it in three hours, selling my CDs, playing all original music. I wasn't doing any covers. And, That's uh, big. and to go from like a hundred dollars a day to, you know, you just sold 70 CDs and a crack is, uh, I just remember feeling like I'd made it almost or like people like this or something. What made you stop doing it? The street performing? Well, yeah. if you're making $800 a day, that's man, you might be able to rent a, a little place in, um, in North yeah. beach out there. Well, you could back then. I mean, that was, that was quite a while ago, maybe 2014 or 2012, 2012, it was 2012. Um, and people carried more cash. People also had CD players. Uh, people don't carry as many, people don't carry as much cash and people do I not have CD players. So what are you selling? You know, you, what do you get to rely on a Venmo tip from somebody? Right. Um, right. So are they going to do some it, cryptocurrency to, uh, to your account yeah sure i'll take it but uh <laughs> the 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 reason i stopped was i had been doing it for several years like three four years five days a week and i was starting to get more gigs indoor okay. gigs uh it was a lot easier it was guaranteed money it was mm. indoors uh, and so I just started taking these residencies and I got, I got a residency at the Ritz Carlton in San Francisco where I, oh, I okay. held, I held a, a residency two to three nights a week at the Ritz Carlton for almost Dang. seven years. Wow. So that was like, just a steady job. Um, and I think I just got accustomed to the easier 
gigs mm. you know i don't have to haul all my gear out to the street set up right. I, I you know i got in fights while i was out there i got in a fight with a homeless guy one time oh my um, gosh yeah like i just all kinds so it was just it's just a wild way to live you know you got a farmer's tan that will never go away because you're out in the sun all the time um yeah it's just, that's true i never thought it's just that. A, it, it, it was just a grind you got seagulls flying over you and <laughs> Your Man, CDs never... blow web. Somebody tries to steal all your money. Uh, like, w- there's all kinds of stuff that's happened over the years in the st- in the street. You're in the street. That's in- man. You you've uh, lasted and persisted through some, <laughs> some challenging challenging times, bro. Yeah, it has been a wild ride, and this last year has been the craziest of them all. So. What's the most in uh, the thing you're looking to the most when things open back up? Oh God. Um, I, I want to be able to see people's faces again. I'm tired mm. of seeing masks everywhere. It's like, you can't, I mean, I'm single and yeah. there's not great ways to meet people. You know, I see my family a lot. It's Some a tough time to be single. Tough time to be single. I don't want to get my family members sick. I have a couple of older people in my family, obviously. Yeah. And, uh, and so I got to be really careful and uh, that sucks. So yeah. uh, I, I would love to see, see friendly faces. What's your dream artist duet, Sam? Oh God. You know, the thing is, I don't think of myself as like a great singer. I think I'm an okay singer. No, come so on, man. to think of come like, on, Sam. to think of my heroes. Okay. So my favorite singer alive is Sia. Oh yeah. She's got, I think she's, she's got some octaves. Singer. She's amazing. I, I love her for a lot of reasons. I've been a fan for a long time. She's a great songwriter. She would be my number one person alive to collab with, mm. uh, just based off of love and respect. But I have no business being in a vocal booth with Sia. So uh, I don't know. You, you 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 got the talent, man. You can't you know knock yourself down like that. Thanks, dude. And you got the fans to back you up. So at the end of the day. They're the ones who decide. All right. Well, if anybody knows Sia, tell her I'd say hi. Sia. Call your boy Sam. What uh, rare or exotic instrument have you always wanted to hear on one of your future recordings? Whoa, cool question. Um, what about like a sitar? Sitars are dope. A sitar? Okay. Yeah, those it's were kind of sitar. big. Like a Timberland was using those for, for a while. And I remember oh, okay. hearing them. Or like a Dobro. Track. Lap steel. I like slide guitar. Oh yeah. I can't I just, play it, but I like it. I was just interviewing a killer lap, uh, slide guitar player. You got to check out named Sarah Rogo. Sarah Rogo. Sarah Rogo. Killer slide guitar player. Okay. What advice, um, would you give someone who wants to pursue, pursue a career in music as an artist? Um, I would say don't do it unless you have nothing else at all that you want to do. Um, I mean, and I, I support people following their passions Mm -hmm. and it's worked out for me to an extent. It has not worked the way I thought it would. Mm. Um, and you don't know. I mean, like that's one of the great things about this career is like, you can have months of nothing and then out of nowhere, right. you'll get a really cool phone call and you're like, Oh my God, mm-hmm. I'm so excited to do this thing, whatever that may be, you yeah. know? Um, so I, but it is, it's really hit or miss. And the, most people don't make it. And most people, if they do make it, don't make it to a very high level. Um, so I would just say be, be very sure about it and me, God, I don't want to say like have a backup plan, right? but you know, I could have, I don't, I, and I don't like, I never went to school for anything. Um, so, but I could have, I wasted a lot of time. You know, if I was more focused, I could have gone to school or the military and done music and had something to fall back on or right. right. um, Just, just be damn sure. That's, you know, think it through. I think a lot of people make the decision to be a musician when they're very young. I was in high school when I said I wanted to be a musician. I didn't know anything about that life or, right. or details, you know, so it's just an ill-informed decision. It, it, is it crazy to think about it that you're living uh, the life of 
of a person who, uh, you're living a decision that was made when, when you were in high school. Like I've thought about that sometimes. Like 18 year old person. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's a great point. Yeah. You know, that's, uh, you don't know what you're getting. It's, it's a, it is challenging, man, but you, you've stuck with yeah. it. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud sure. to see your growth, bro. You really, <laughs> you keep evolving and, um, you know, where, where do you go from here? Where, do, where would you like to see the, the future go? Well, first of all, thanks so much. Uh, you know, that's a beautiful compliment. And I'm glad that You're welcome. It's, per it's perceived that way because, you know, I have my doubts all the time. Yeah. And I have the whole time I've been doing it. We all do. I've thought about quitting many, many times. Yeah, everybody does probably. Um, where do I go from here? Well, I'm going to keep hammering the songs. So still writing, still writing songs, nice. working on my podcast. Uh, and that's it, man. Like, that's it. I'm writing, I'm working on my podcast All and, right. uh, and, and looking at things to open up in the future. So, you know, making some plans around that. What kind releasing, of a lot of music. releasing a lot of music. Okay. And what kind of gigs can uh, people hire you for, for all those folks who I think should hire Sam for their next wedding or uh, sure. original I, gig? I, 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 as we mentioned, I started in the street. I've played every single type of gig you can imagine. Right. Like I've, I've shown up to people's houses and played for two people, you know, like wow. I've done, and I've played for 2000 people. I was mm. on tour with the band train last year. What? Uh, and, and yeah, we, we did a, a festival. It's like a cruise ship festival tour, essentially. So we're, out at sea for a week and it's a festival at sea so wow uh, yeah. you man so yeah so like uh, oh, just all kinds of, of crazy gigs so whatever you got cooking you can let me know you can find me on instagram and facebook and all that stuff at sam johnson live at sam johnson live my website's sam johnson live.com and uh yeah just reach out to me through there everybody check out sam johnson he's an incredible artist really cool dude He's got a nice, like I said, the music makes you feel good. Uh, it's like you're cruising on Highway One. Uh, it depends on the song, though. You know, each song has a different mood or tone. And, it's got um, some California flavor. Yeah, there's, like there's a lot of California seasonings in there that I think you guys are like. So uh, thanks, Sam. I appreciate you hopping on board here. And uh, we'll no have doubt, to reconnect man. again.